Hello everyone and welcome back to Edureka's YouTube channel. This is Atul from Edureka and today we have come with an exciting episode on Splunk's architecture. As you all know, whenever there is a need of analyzing, monitoring or visualizing the log, the most common tool which comes on everyone's mind is Splunk. But what happens inside Splunk? Let's see in this video. Needless to say how popular and powerful the tool is, let's drill down to today's agenda. For better understanding, before I proceed with Splunk's architecture, let me give you a brief idea for each component. This would make things easier for you to understand. So without delaying any further, let's discuss today's agenda. We'll start our session with distributed Splunk's component, where I'll teach you about forwarder, indexer and searcher. Don't worry, I won't miss my part on the advanced component. I will include the parts for deployer, deployment server, license master and cluster master. Once we are done with this part, it will be easier for you to understand and grasp things about Splunk's architecture. It would be easier for me as well to discuss about Splunk's architecture such that each one of you get a fair understanding about it and you actually gain something out of this short video. Let's start our session with Splunk's component and let me give you a brief idea for each component and how they work together as a cluster inside the Splunk. You might be wondering why do we need a Splunk cluster when all the components can be installed on one single machine? Well. If you are working in a bigger environment and dealing with huge amount of data coming from multiple sources, then in that case, running just one single instance of Splunk won't work for you. You have to get multiple instances in order to work smoothly. Let's assume a scenario. Suppose you are working with around 100 GBs of data per day. Then in that case, I recommend you to have at least three running instances to work smoothly as you could distribute your data and get faster search result from it. I hope you got a fair idea of what a Splunk cluster is. Before we proceed any further and teach you how a Splunk cluster actually works, let me help you in understanding different components available in a distributed Splunk cluster. As you can see here on the screen, we have a total of six important components of Splunk, out of which search head, indexer, and forwarder. These three are the basic components, and the rest, deployers, license master, deployment server, and cluster master, are relatively advanced component of the cluster. Let me give you a one-liner for each of them. This should make things easier for you to understand. Let's start with search head. Search head is a part where the end user writes their query to perform the search on the data. So you would be wondering where does this data comes from? So this data comes from the indexer. The indexer is a place where the data resides. It is used to process the machine data and stores the result in indexes as events. This allows us to perform search in a faster way and analyze it in a better way. I guess your next question would be how this data comes to an indexer. Don't worry, I have a solution to that. We have a forwarder. As the name suggests, it is used to forward something. Well, it forwards the data coming to it. It collects the data coming from multiple resources and it sends it to the indexer. So these were the basic components. Now let's discuss about the more advanced component of the cluster. What we have here? We have a cluster master, deployment server, deployers and a license master. Starting with cluster master. So what is a cluster master? Cluster master is the one which coordinates all the activities and updates of an indexer within a cluster. This thing is also known as a master node. It is coordinating every updates and whatever things is happening inside an indexer is being controlled by a cluster master. The next is a deployment server or a deployers. Well, there is a very slight hairline difference between a deployer and a deployment server. The difference is that the deployment server sends configuration and app updates to all the components, including forwarder, indexer and search head. While this deployer, it sends configuration and app updates only to the search head. Next, what do we have here? We have a license master, which prevents you from exceeding your purchase limit. Suppose you have registered Splunk for 500 GBs of data per day and you are about to exceed that limit. As soon as you exceed that limit, you will get notified by the license master that you cannot ingest any more data for the day. So this was the use of a license master. I hope you got the individual uses of each of them. Now let's see how each component work together in the next slide. By now, I assume that you have a fair understanding of different components of Splunk. Let's move on and see what happens inside Splunk and how each component work together. We have a forwarder which is collecting the data coming from multiple ends. The forwarder then sends the collected data to be stored at indexer. The indexer then processes the machine data and stores the result in indexes as events. Indexing the data allows faster search and analysis. Let me explain you with an example how the data is actually indexed within an indexer. 
Let's assume there are three indexes and the data is shared and spread across all of them, which means that we'll have one third of the data on one indexer. Now when a user comes and write its query on the search head to search the data, then the search head will send its query on each indexer. That is same query will decide on indexer 1, 2 and so on. Now each indexer will run the query on its data. You can see that searching is performed on one third of the data. Now once the searching is done, it's time to collect the result. So in total we'll be getting three results from three different indexers. Now it's the job of the search head to merge all these results and display it to the end user. One of the member of search head cluster has a role of a captain which coordinates job among all the member. Over the time, the role of captain can shift from one cluster member to other. Apart from these, we have other advanced components which are deployer, cluster master and deployment server. These I already taught you in the last slide. I hope you remembered that. Uh, just for recap, let me tell you again. Deployment server gives configuration and app updates to forwarder, indexer and search head. While this deployer, it sends configuration and app updates only to the search head. Now the cluster master, the cluster master is responsible for all the configuration and app updates inside our indexer. As you can see here on the slide, the forwarder and the indexer are designed to be used by the technical guys. It can be used by a system engineer or a system admin. While the search head part, it is designed to be used by both the technical as well as the non-technical guys. It can be used by an analyst to create visualization and reports out of it. Whereas it can also be used by system admin and the system engineers. Till now, we have covered the first half of our agenda and discuss about Splunk's component. I hope you got a fair understanding of different components and how they work together. Now I guess you are ready to understand the architecture of Splunk and learn how things work inside a Splunk's engine. Just for a better understanding of Splunk's architecture, let's take a scenario. We have a Sam who is a system engineer with an experience of 5 to 6 years. Sam interacts with the Splunk CLI and his job is to make sure that all the data coming from multiple resources are already available in the right place. We have another guy named Billy. He is an analyst with an experience of around 9 to 10 years. Billy accesses Splunk web interface to search, analyze and create reports for the collected data. Meanwhile, Billy is busy in analyzing and creating reports out of his data. Let's see what Sam is up to. Meanwhile, Sam is busy in collecting inputs from multiple end. He is getting logs from different network port or via running script. He is even keeping a track for any changes made in the file. Uh, let me explain you this with an example. You will understand it in a better way. Consider all your logs are in a raw format and they are not ingested into Splunk yet. Maybe all the logs are residing in log file or is getting pushed in network port, which we commonly refer to as syslog. Now this Splunk has the ability to monitor the file. That is, they track and detect the changes made to any file. And the Splunk, it includes only those new changes into it. For example, consider a scenario where you're having an application which writes all its performance data to a log. Let's assume on the previous day, we had around 10,000 of rows in our file. And by today, it had added more amount of logs to it. They were increasing the count to 11,000. So now we have 1,000 new rows added to the file. So when you use the monitor file, the Splunk will detect the change and it will index only those new thousand row. It won't add the complete log file. Are you getting it? As it doesn't index any duplicate events. Remember that Splunk never index any duplicate events. In simple words, Splunk keeps a track of the data indexed into it. Just FYI, the Splunk uses MD5 hash in order to detect those changes. And the same is the case with network port. These are all the various ways in which Splunk can collect the data. Now all the information, the file changes, the network port, the running of script are all managed by forwarder. There are basically two types of forwarder, universal and heavy forwarder. Universal forwarder is a lightweight stripped down version of Splunk. It does not have any functionality other than pulling or pushing data to indexer. It does not have any ability to filter the data. Whereas a heavy forwarder, it can parse the incoming data and it can filter it. Both universal and heavy forwarder are capable of sending data to indexer. Once the data is in, Sam can create indexes for it. For indexing the data, he uses data routing protocol and load balancer to distribute the big amount of data among all the indexers. Let me explain you this with an example. Suppose you have five servers which are clustered together as an indexer. 
and your data it is spread across all the indexes as discussed universal forwarder have the capability to route this data they won't be sending data to just one server they are highly intelligent enough to distribute this data to all those five servers equally so they do all the data routing and load balancing while pushing the data to an indexer cluster sam can also give or restrict access to various splunk application for different user now if you are wondering what a splunk app is then in a simple term splunk app is a pre-built collection of dashboards panels and ui element it makes splunk useful and relevant for different roles now sam also keeps the instances updated with deployment server the deployment server is used to manage the components by component i mean the search head indexer and the forwarder just for example you'll be having more than 100 of universal forwarder now if you want to push your configuration to each forwarder then practically you cannot do manual change on each of them so in order to manage those forwarder in a centralized manner you will use a deployment server so the primary use of deployment server is to push the configuration updates to all the component oops we almost forgot about billy let's see what he is doing Oh, it seems that Billy is working very hard to gain operational intelligence by searching and analyzing the data collected by Sam. Let me give you a clear picture of this. Consider it in this way. Now our data is in the index. The user will have the ability to search the data, but these user will not be given the access to these indexer. By indexer, I mean the physical system or the GUI. These indexes are not available for the normal user to log in. The normal user will be given access to only the search head part. Now this search head is a place where they will come and write their queries and the search head it will distribute the search among all the search head clusters. Now what if in future more members are added to Billy's team? What should he do then? Then he has a solution. He can distribute the search on various instances by distributed search. Now that the user has access to search head, he can search through the index data. The end user has the ability to create knowledge objects. By knowledge object, I mean tags, event types, or field aliases. They can also create reports and schedule alerts. Usually, Splunk is used for monitoring. It could be monitoring of network or of network enterprise. As a part of it, we'll be creating the, all these alerts. All these monitoring, search head, or reporting will happen on top of the search head. So, this was the complete architecture of Splunk or how each component of Splunk's work. Now let me give you a short recap of the architecture of Splunk. Well, initially you will be having a raw data which would be collected by heavy or light forwarder. Now these forwarder would push the collected data to indexer cluster and while pushing this data, they would make sure that data routing and load balancing happens on all the data. Now since all the data is in, the user can search across it using search head to create knowledge objects, reports and alerts. So I guess we have reached the end of this session. I hope you guys got what you came for. Let me conclude this session with a short recap of what we learned in this session. We discussed about different components in a Splunk cluster where we learned about forwarder, indexer, search head, deployer, deployment server and cluster master and how all these components work together. We also discussed the architecture of Splunk where we learned how things work inside a Splunk's engine. Thank you folks. This was all for this session. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to subscribe for more exciting videos from Edureka and keep yourself updated with hot and trending technical content in the market. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.